I am Hena Talati. Welcome to its tomorrow news. Tornadoes hit United States as La Nina comes to end. Severe tornadoes hit the United States this week with at least seven reported on Tuesday in Illinois while on Wednesday morning a powerful tornado tore through the southeastern Missouri causing widespread damage and at least five deaths in the Bollinger County. According to the National Weather Service, the Missouri tornado lasted for 15 minutes with the winds reaching peaks of 130 miles per hour. A wave of thunderstorms and tornadoes in the United States over the past few weeks have resulted in the deaths of at least 63 people. Rising global temperatures and moisture levels are likely to make the conditions for the formation of the severe storms more favorable, but that does not necessarily mean more tornadoes. It remains uncertain what will happen with the wind shear, rapid changes in the wind speed or direction in a hitting world, with some climate models indicating it will decrease in the future. Most tornadoes are generated from the supercell thunderstorms, which are characterized by the continual rotating updraft and develop in a conditions of a strong vertical wind shear. Meanwhile, an unusually long period of the La Nina has come to an end. Latest forecast model shows that we will see the transition to the El Nino phase over the coming months, perhaps moving to moderate or strong El Nino conditions by the late summer. This shift will have significant implications for the weather patterns across the globe. La Nina is often associated with the more severe tropical storms across the Atlantic, greater precipitation across the Australia and western parts of the South America as well as increase in hail and tornado activities across the parts of the United States. In contrast, El Nino often leads to the drought conditions and wildfires across the Australia, stronger tropical storms across the Pacific, as well as increase in average global temperatures. A moderate to strong El Nino may have big implications for the weather pattern across the Europe through the summer and the past El Nino years have seen unsettled conditions develop in the Northwest Europe in July, including the United Kingdom with the drier and hotter conditions focused across the Central Europe. During normal conditions in the Pacific Ocean, trade winds blow west along the equator taking warm water from the South America towards the Asia. To replace that warm water, cold water rises from the depths of the process called upwelling. El Nino and La Nina are the two opposing climate patterns that break through the normal conditions. Scientists call these phenomena the El Nino Southern Oscillation Cycle. El Nino and La Nina can be both have global impacts on weather, wildfires, ecosystems and economies. Episodes of El Nino and La Nina typically last 9 to 12 months but can sometimes last for years. El Nino and La Nina events occur every 2 to 7 years on average but they don't occur on a regular schedule. Generally, El Nino occurs more frequently than La Nina. During El Nino, trade winds weaken and warm water is pushed back east towards the west coast of Americas. El Nino means little boy in Spanish. South American fishermen first noticed periods of the unusually warm water in the Pacific Ocean in the 1600s. The full name they used was El Nino de Navidad because El Nino typically peaks around December. El Nino can affect our weather significantly. The warm waters cause the Pacific jet stream to move south to its neutral position. With this shift, areas in the northern United States and Canada are drier and warmer than usual. But in United States, Gulf Coast and Southern, Southern East, these periods are wetter than usual and have increased flooding. 
that's all for now for more news updates stay tuned with us it's tomorrow news for more global weather updates like this subscribe our channel and hit the bell icon for regular updates